if you aren't already aware, I am Gravemaster Hash, the dancer of graves. Uh, with me is my uh, co-host and a good friend, Spencer. <laughs> amateur everything as well, which you definitely don't know. So it's amateur three everything because I uh, couldn't find the name. Somebody else took the name, and there's no such thing with as originality on the internet. So you just add numbers. To point out that we have a cool, uh, what is it, um, incense uh, thing that you bought at a Ren Renaissance Fair. I did. Yeah. I did. I went to a Renaissance Fair, and I wanted to buy things, and they're either massively expensive or stuff that I would never use. But I said, fuck it, I'm getting into incense. Not because I use them, but because I saw a pretty incense holder. Incense are awesome. I lo My favorite part about incense is that moms hate them. I don't know what... what You're what, right. Why do moms hate them? I don't... If you are a mother, <laughs> you are like something suspicious about this incense. I don't know what it is about the mothering race, but they all are very suspicious of incense. Yeah, I, I, I just... I had the same thing, because I asked her, I was like, hey, mom, I got this guy, burn them in my room? No. Well, it's going to stay. And it's like, yeah, but it smells great. Like, don't you want my stuff to smell? You yeah. already complain that I smell it, as a it kid. It is very counterproductive. Right. It does not make sense. I could do a whole podcast about mother's hate, hatred towards incense. I, I don't get it. Uh, so what I actually ended up doing, you know, you want to hear a super cool yeah. story. What I ended up doing was riding around. Like, I had a little BMX bike that I'd ride around my college campus on. And I'd put them in my mouth like a punk. Not the, not the music, but like, you know, the plant. And just, like, light the end of it just so I could smell it and just ride around the like that. That is ingeniously <laughs> di DIY. I like, that is very DIY, like, to do the – it's like, I'll teach you, mother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just inhale myself because this was at college where we couldn't And you're incense. inhaling incense? Yeah, it was probably pretty bad for me. Not oh, lie, dude, but, oh, well. that's hardcore punk. It yeah. was it was definitely harsh. I could definitely uh, tell you that much. But it was – I don't know. It was just – That I, is one of the more hardcore stories you've told me about yourself, <laughs> I, I'd have to say. The big trope of that for my generation uh, of old hardcore guys has been the band Turnstile. Okay. And we mentioned this when I brought up to you a few days ago. I was like – Oh, have you heard the new Turnstile album? And you're like, who's Turnstile? And I was like, that's the episode right there. Yeah, I have, I have no idea. I saw Turnstile because of people talking about it on the tic on, on the TikTok. Now I sound old. On TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> Trope about being an older hardcore guy, and that's that you don't like new hardcore. Ah, of that, course. That's the, you don't like the new shit. You don't want to hear nothing cool. And what I would consider most of this music is top 40s hardcore. Top and 40s, that, Billboard's top yeah, hardcore. We'll call it. it top 40s hardcore. I, I, my, I, I credit that to Michelle, my boss at uh, Catluck. She came up with that phrase. But uh, the idea behind top 40s hardcore is that there's just these certain bands that are in the hardcore punk scene and they hit a sense of popularity where like non-hardcore and punk fans listen to the band right. and will like go to their shows and do stuff like that. And like old heads hate it. <laughs> like, I don't know why. Old heads, we fucking hate it. We're like, oh, God dare. How dare they get bring people into this and like it. Uh, I don't know. And the, the, yes. And then the old heads start complaining about how the scene's dying. Exactly. Love exactly. It. Love yeah, it. It's, it's, Fantastic. It's a circle. It's a nice circle. Uh, what is it? And our, ours is always better. Like, what scene I grew up in is nostalgically looked at. And if you look at it any other way, like with criticism or with, like, open complaints about its misogyny and racism no no nostalgia no you're <laughs> just you're just sensitive yeah you're you're, you're, you're just, a bunch of pussies you're and, trying uh, to do cancel culture how no bitch. something something like something like <laughs> going to step to the rhythm that is their first full length um what is it this premiered in 2013 and when this album came out it was a pretty big deal people really blew up because it's a great album and we're gonna play the first. Uh, we're gonna play the 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 song "Step to a Rhythm" on "Step to a Rhythm" by Turnstile. Gotcha. The, uh, for the YouTube fans, you're gonna get like five seconds of this song. So just look it up on Spotify or other streaming services. On that album is "Step to the Rhythm," and we're gonna play that song and we're gonna let you listen to a little Turnstile. Four twenty, nice. Yeah. All right, here we are. Good. It's got that classic hardcore two step. This bit is meant for two step. Like, break out the waves! Get back just like that! We're like, it's not as aggressive as I've heard on a lot of hardcore. We're like, it's like, we're like, bounce like. Because I'm, 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 I'm
better D. Limpin can play. They are the bouncy souls of us. I like that. That's how, that's how I look at them. They are, it's fun. Yeah. Not like, oh no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Like, what? Precisely. Life. And that is why all parts of the head go fast. Because it's not angry shouting enough, like you can't smile and hardcore. Yeah. But it's all two step. It's all like yeah. that. Right. You know, it's just fun. There's not a lot to it. We're not thinking about something super deep. It's like fucking let's rock. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And it's got that surfer kind of shore vibe. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. The yeah. California guys, you know? But as a person that grew up on the shore, I never want to hear Sublime ever again in my entire life. And, and I don't like 311. From that, they came out with what I would argue is their best album. Okay. And that's nonstop feelings. And uh, on nonstop feelings, what should we listen to to give you an uh, I think uh, gravity. Well, okay. The I was first gonna say one. while you're while you're figuring out the song, I was gonna say that was fun. And I, what I liked about uh, that song in particular is even if you don't know how to two step or you're just like you're just new and you don't you're a little insecure about dancing or something, that's something you could at least just bop to. You just fucking bop and just have fun. Even if you just, even if you just look like one of the uh, background characters in Guitar Hero, that's just like. So yeah. you liked it, like I straight did. off. You yeah, liked, that was you fun. Th you thought it was a fun song. You liked it, and I feel that that is the majority of the next three albums. Stuff okay. like that, I'm gonna show you. We're gonna jump, uh, like we're gonna keep jumping. Through, well, I'm gonna do one song per album to right. go down the, the line. But yeah, let's get your take. You, you basically, you thought that was fun. That was like, fun. And and I think that this is where old heads get upset it doesn't have it has some of the classic tropes of the style of playing hardcore right but it has none of the other tropes it's just fun music and it sound i will tell you this is the band that during when i was younger and they came out and people were like oh i fucking love turnstile it was a lot of like it just seemed like college freshmen who were trying to find themselves like that guy who's like I don't like, I like sports a little bit. Mm -hmm. I like music a little bit. I know how to play guitar a little bit. Right. I, I can, I can skate a little bit. I can, you know, like I go to the gym sometimes, like somebody who is not necessarily into any one thing, but just kind of is a guy. And it, sure. and it brought in that like generic muggle normie audience. <laughs> I shouldn't use muggle anymore because she's a turf. But uh, but regardless, so I does that I, mean I have to stop using half blood? I love uh, yes, it does. Do you oh. know what? Do you know what that the, what the connotation behind all of that is, and why I'm stopped using it? Is I mean I know what, JK, I know what J. I know well, it's JK. not just no, because I still will watch the fuck out of those movies because they're fucking entertaining and I love them and I'm a child inside. <laughs> uh, and, and I don't care; those books are still good, fun books. Right, as the kids. story is still a great yeah, story. Yeah, like it's a good story regardless of the fact that she's a piece of shit upsetting is in the like lore and fandom of harry potter mm -hmm. we're getting way off track but it doesn't matter the, that's a the, podcast baby yeah uh, the the lore and uh, uh, fandom of harry potter racists use it as like metaphors to find each other so they'll hang out in the fandom of harry potter pages and, oh. and go to their things and they'll just use the half-blood mud blood like muggle terminology to right. the point where you're like they're applying it to people of color or Jewish people or women or something mm. something along those lines, and then it opens them into uh, like a, a a a line into that kind of white supremacy. Gotcha. And that's, so it's like a way of talking so, behind. Yeah. So in my opinion, as a Harry Potter fan, just enjoy the movies and books. The don't let's not focus so much on calling people who don't like that fandom muggles. And I'm going to stop using it as a terminology in punk I because thought... because I just don't want to be categorized. Like, this is the minute. The minute Nazis start using something, they can have it. I, I don't want it. I don't want it. You know? Like, 
Uh, I guess. I, but I, I know what you mean, but it's just like the condensation behind Half-Blood is so much worse. Well, I mean, but that's why I would call myself. I know that it was worse. Well, I mean, I don't no, know if you I know how bad. You were technically a Mudblood. You would not be a Half-Blood. A half, a half blood is a is a terminology towards the half blood prince, that is oh. a real connotation towards racism. Like okay, that cool. in the book, they mean racist. For those that didn't right. understand the joke, you know, they have your wizards, you have your muggles, and in the punk scene, I consider myself half and half. Yeah, you I would like, be a mu- you would be a mud blood. You'd there be we the, go. And that is uh, also a racist term in the Harry Potter universe. But it's fantasy and i'm calling myself it so i know like, yeah you can you can call yourself that uh, i guess as a person i don't know how that works honestly if someone came <laughs> up and was just like hey you fucking mud blood i'd be like are you is this serious did you is that it's, are it, you trying i would just laugh either way because if you I, call well, me mud blood then it's funny to me in the punk way and it's funny to me if you genuinely tried to use that as a hurt i, I would refer to me. you as um not a newbie i would that's not i would consider you're just not a senior person in yeah, it. I mean, and that's like and that happens to people like myself who grew up very young impressionable by it and then stuck with it even knew it you saw all the problematic things about it because i'm like i think that there is no time in my life other than now where mm-hmm. i can f- fully make an argument for hardcore and punk okay where i can now be like no there's a lot of good stuff yeah throughout my childhood most of the time people would be like there's all this stuff that's bad i'm like yeah that's true <laughs> like that you know like like the argument you're making for for jk Rowling's right now is the argument i made for 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 punk a majority of my life <laughs> i uh for the record i am not defending JK yeah Rowling. i know you're not but you know like that like oh i want to do this you know yes like, exactly that's well, kind of just... what uh, what it was like Dude, to be into punk the progression of up. everything i mean i'm not gonna lie I, i've said a few pejoratives in my original xbox live days that i would never oh yeah we all we've all but i like, totally fully agree i'm not idea. guilty i'm guilty the same it's of the same idea and it's racist like, things i've never used this i i never use this word with the hateful backing but like as time progresses like oh, okay i can see how I th- but that's that's progression that's, as exactly, a human that's being growing and up. i think i think that what hardcore does just like being in a bubble mm-hmm of any kind, punk and hardcore are bubbles. Sure. And being in that bubble can make you think really ignorantly. For sure. And I and I think what we're doing right now is an experiment on the fact that you enjoy this but don't have the bubble I have. True. I'm trying to break my bubble. From that, that, I, I, that's, you're my helping. I'm popping my punk chair. You're popping your punk bubble. Got it. it yeah, because it's <laughs> it, you get into these, like, I did not like this band up right. into the newest album. I openly was like, no, Turnstile sucks. It sounds like Jimmy Buffett started a hardcore band. Uh, I, I, that hurt me. God damn. Uh, wow. Right? It wow. hurts. It hurts because I like Jimmy Buffett a little bit. Yeah, oh, see, I that's do. where I get key. Who, no, who doesn't <laughs> like like margaritas and sitting on the beach and parrots? And I do, like, as long as Jimmy Buffett doesn't sing behind me. I love all that stuff. <laughs> I love everything that Jimmy Buffett does. I think his music is hot garbage. But I think can, it's we fun. Can do, you know what? We can do a whole episode on Jimmy yeah, Buffett. Yeah, I think Give it's fun. Give me a platform to rant about Jimmy Buffett. Yeah, I will. Fir- first concert I ever went to was a Jimmy Buffett I'm concert. so sorry. My, pa- my mother's a huge Jimmy Buffett I'm surprised fan. that you just didn't drop out of music instantly. Good for I, you. I, they, I, first time I tried beer. Uh, they had a giant margarita glass that dispensed free beer. And I walked up to it thinking like, oh, it just gives free drinks. Mm-hmm. Like I, as a child being that, that naive, right. I had beer poured out of it and I drank it. I was like, this is terrible. I right. was like, why do people drink this? And I drank the full beer, like kind of like being you, like, I got a free beer and I'm like 12. So you, you don't know, know like, if you like it until you consume the whole thing. And all it was see- probably like Coors Light. It tasted very tinny. It's, yeah, uh, yeah it's probably like a fifteen dollar Coors Light. Yeah, you know, it was, I assume show. it was like something like Coors Light sponsored it or something <laughs> like that. You know, Listen, Jimmy Buffett's fine. I just, you know, fun, one of those funny things. I grew up hating Jimmy Buffett with no, no palpable really. Re- it's no one fine. gave you a, a reason to. You were no, just like fuck besides Jimmy that, Buffett. the fact that my dad would play it all the time, and I actually liked most of my dad's music. But Jimmy Buffett, I just couldn't. St- Is you know your dad real into? Do your dad own a boat? Does he have like b- m- nautica things? Right. He does have a chaparral, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll make okay. a little ball back. I'm yeah. just saying, there's a type of person <laughs> when, that likes when, Jimmy Buffett. When the shoe fits. Yeah, the shoe fit. my I mom, lo- everything in our house was shore, st- like shore thing. I was like, I've grown up on the beach my whole life, and there's been a 
beach scene in my home and sh- seashells everywhere sure. growing up my whole life. And so like, I, my mother's the, the, <laughs> the same, all right? The She's antithesis. a parrot head, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. But uh, right. back to our main point. This is the album where you kind of had, like, this is, this is a trope in hardcore. Hardcore bands, most hardcore bands, they wrote one good album, a few other bangers. That's about it. Mm-hmm. They just fall to the wayside or just literally break up and form another group or just right. stop playing music or whatever. Because 90% of hardcore is kids from the ages of 17 to 23, 24. Like, that's a majority of the people writing this music. So, with this album, we're going to put on Gravity, on the non, uh, n- Non-Stop Feelings. Uh, this yes. is the album that you could argue is their album. This is the... They wrote a great album. Uh, they're part of that whatever era of hardcore you grew up in. If you were getting into hardcore in the early 2000s, like 2013, this was your f- favorite band. Okay, right on. Shall we? Yes, shall we? We're Literally. playing Gravity. It's <laughs> feeling it's what they want. Oh, yeah. It's feeling This is another trope in hardcore. You gotta have a cool opener. Of course. You gotta have a little sound bite. Two-step, I right? see about that. I see how two-step. I see exactly where this all varies. Two-step, so hardcore, and that's all they are. They are just. Do you like to two-step? Here's some rhythm for you. <laughs> it sounds like very inviting hardcore. Like but, I can't imagine that this would propagate a pit where people are ninja pinwheeling and stuff. Like maybe at it's portions. Eternal. Right, but this is something that like, everyone can get in. <laughs> and it's like, it's that you're standing in the back as an old guy going. <laughs> like, right, you're like, this is. Yeah, I lo- I, it's fine. It's alright. I won't recognize it, but it's alright. And it's got that shorty. Like, each body. Right, see these motherfuckers down. coming off Show the beach to go to some show and do this. And they're like. I never thought of like people going to the beach and surfing and coming back to hardcore. Like that's just not something. I even... very, dude, we are from New Jersey. Yeah, I know. Like, I Listen, I know, I know. You're not wrong. It's just again, bubble pop. I just never even thought about that. But that's that's like that's a defining, and this is another thing. Like that's a defining part of California hardcore and New Jersey hardcore versus other hardcore communities. Like shore style is a thing in hardcore. And Turnstile is kind of an argument for their version of Shore Style. I mean, I don't want to say that because it's a big thing. But, and Shore Style is really not a sound. They're, like, Shore Style is, you are from this area, you are part of this community, you are a Shore Style punk. Where these guys are making it a sound. Gotcha. You know? Okay. Yeah, yeah. And that's what California made. Like, California, like, made this. And this is a style of hardcore now, in a way. But after this album, like everybody's like, and I think every kid that got into hardcore at this time is like, I want to be Death Star. Okay. Like, I grew up during an era where everybody wanted to be Death by Stereo. Like, you know, and they're a California band. Okay. You know, like, I, now, like Death by Stereo is a California band. Right, right, right. They're much more metal. Got gotcha. And this, and I. Oh, uh, this is where you start. Yeah, yeah this, is the, okay. this is the this is the the, the the breakdown. Yeah. Now I'm gonna show you a TikTok related to the song afterwards. Okay. From my good my good pal Kill Murphy. Oh, uh, I've heard, heard of them. Because he makes a wonderful argument for this song particularly. All right. So it's nothing but throwdown fun. What more do you need? And there's, a, like, what I'm trying to tell you is I did not like this. I, like, I sat there with my hands folded in the back, being like, brr. So. In, in 2006. So we're going to stop that now. So in, like, yeah, 2006, when this came out, I was one of those people standing in the back being like, yeah, I guess it's good. Dude, I think everyone has to, not everyone has to, but I think a lot of people go through, like, a puritanical hatred phase where, like, I used to be only muscle cars and Classic rock 
up until like my sophomore year of high school is when I finally lightened the fuck up. But it wasn't even the fact that that's all I would listen to. I thought you were fucking stupid. If you listen to this new music, you gotta listen to Skinner, bro. Dude, the doors do it way better. I mean, like, you sound like the mentality of like literally a 12 year old pretentious kid. Like, that sounds like that. Like, that. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, no. you're like, you know, that kid at 12 that's like, oh, the police did it better. And you're exactly. like, did you just say the police to me? Like, <laughs> I I will say though, I listened to the Doors during the emo phase. Like, obviously, Doors is not considered an emo album, but like when everyone was going through their MCR, you know, best or uh, fun, I was in the I back, remember. very angry at them, telling them that they weren't into funk, and now I I fight to the death to argue that those people are part of my community. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, but so for with the, all that emo music, like, I was listening to The Doors. I watched Teen Titans, and during all the Love sad terror parts, it would just be me on my way to baseball practice sitting in the back of my CD player listening to This is the End, My Beautiful Friend, The End, as I'm thinking about Teen Titans. <laughs> it's just like a fucking song that I put in a Vietnam War movie, but that was my ego phase. Do you think it comes along with liking classic cars? Because, like, that, I would assume the fan base of cla classic cars are more into, like, an older classic rock <laughs> style music. So there is a YouTube channel called Regular Car Reviews, which okay. is hilarious, and his term for those people people are called wingadingas because you wingadingas. go wingadingas yeah wingadingas because when you, when you go to a car show all you hear in the background is wingadinga 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 so yeah it's oh. all it's all i guess that's a little bit older that's probably more like your 50s 60s car so it's not quite classic rock but points all the same thing but yeah i mean it's it's all a complete trope the know... boomer in their muscle car listening to led, led zeppelin do, like now you I, if you continue down the path you're going you are gonna be one of these people, so I'm gonna tell you. The oh, trope. I can't wait. Uh, oh, like, I, but, but I will. No, own I'm it. not saying that. I'm saying the punk rock because punk rock has a horrible. We have we have two paths, maybe three, as <laughs> old punks, and it's jazz fusion, or rockabilly. And I see you going rockabilly. I see you going full. I'm going jazz fusion because I'm angry. I don't. Maybe uh, I need to. I'm listen, upset. Maybe I need to listen to more jazz fusion because I started off. It's not good. It's like it's music. For people that are arguing that they like music a lot more than you. Oh, and if you don't get it, you're just not on the same level yeah, as dude, them. Dude, it's literally, like, imagine horns and one drummer trying to start a hardcore band. That's what it sounds like. It's like... I mean... Bleep, 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 and, you're like, and you're like, are they in Dillinger Escape Plan? Is this <laughs> is what this is? Like, I'm like, am I listening to fucking Horse the Band? Or... <laughs> There's a, a different YouTuber back in the day, I forget his name, but he made a vi video called uh, Jazz Argument, and it was pretty much just him mouthing, like, the noises to these instruments. Like, he didn't have any audio. He would just play, like, what set, what jazz like, and then it? And then he would just be like... <laughs> but yeah, fantastic. I, I, it's because at that level of playing, it's about being an expert. And, yeah. like, and that, like, I understand that about, like, grindcore... And like certain aspects of metal, like if you're in, if like if somebody comes up to me and goes, my favorite band is Dream Theater. I'm like, you like playing guitar a lot. Okay. Like you really like playing guitar, and you only want to listen to people play guitar, and you want to hear them play guitar in a way that somewhat sounds inhumanly possible. But right. like, like, but that's what I mean. You're somebody who is an expert fan in something, and I feel like that's what jazz fusion is. It's like. It's people who learn to be such good musicians where they're like, I'm looking for a fucking challenge. <laughs> like, that's that's why I learned about grindcore and thrash and stuff. Because I mean, I listen to it and like, those shows are entertaining as hell. I love I love watching them on YouTube and whatnot. But like, to listen to a, a studio recording on Spotify, it, it's like I mean, it doesn't really do it for me. But it, I, see I what realize you're saying, totally. It it I, I just never considered the idea of not playing music for like melodically but playing to see what you can do kind of like the noise mentality where it's like what happens when i do this but then i guess more it's articulation more... and more it's more about structure patterns articulation when it comes to grindcore and stuff like that because it's just what noises can i make in this beat in this rhythm as fast as slow whatever and like that's that's what i got from it i think you're perfect for this type of format that we've set up because you're 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 openly listening to everything you're openly attacking everything yeah. so that makes it a lot easier 
where I'm literally attacking this with my built-in tropes. Like, I like <laughs> for the first time ever, the person trying to convince the other person is already like, I'm sit sitting in my ways. <laughs> you know, like you have, you're like, well, you're like, yeah, show me, whatever you know. I'm like, Dude, I don't know. <laughs> it's the best, man. I'm telling you, like. like just- so it's very, it's very, it's a very humorous uh, way. So the <laughs> next album on uh, the list here is Time and Space. Okay. Now this is the album that I think is the weakest in the the, the format. Right. It's not a bad album, in any way. Uh, it's just uh, compared to the other two that were re really the first releases. The what is it? Uh, uh, Step to the rhythm. That is perfect. Like, Step to the Rhythm, I admit, even just re-listening to it the first time, it's perfect. Uh, what is it? The Nonstop Feelings is just a good album. It's a perfect album. That's right. what, like I said, this is the trope they come up with. They write some bangers. There might be one banger on this album, but it, it, it can, it consistently isn't as good mm-hmm. as the other album, and that's that. Now, looking back at this, I do think it's a lot better than what I originally thought, but I do think it's a weaker album. So we're going to play a song off that. We're going to go with... Uh, can't uh can't get away uh that's now this will give you some of the elements that are going to happen in this next album that is a big change for the band okay these like melodic trope openings they start to do and you think this is the weaker I, I think out of the four albums they have uh listed on spotify here uh, I think this is the weaker of the four. I don't think it's a bad album. Mm-hmm. It shows a little more of their talents. Um, the first two are just fun. And this right. one is a little bit... I guess them growing as a band. And I don't want the growing process. I want to do that. But right back to usual. Do you remember how to two-step? <laughs> <laughs> Have you forgotten for a simple moment? Because don't worry. We're here to show you. Now, the other thing is the lyrics, like the way they do the vocals, it's that echoey, like, I'm oh, yeah. in the background, the music is in the foreground, uh, thing. The echo, I don't, that's them to me. That's like, I don't, their bands do that now, but these are other tropes that I see that this band set. Do you think they pioneered it? In a way, okay. I would argue, yeah, in a way. Little group vocals in there. Ooh. Give the crowd something to hug. Uh, if you don't have group vocals, get the fuck out of here. You're not in hard. But it, you're feeling if there's a theme here, right? You know, like there's a style of how they play. I can, and I appreciate that they they break away from it and then come right back to it. And yeah. Break away from it and come back to it. That's so. yeah. So it's, a, it's, it's one of those things where it, it allows for them to do something new without abandoning what got them where they are now. I think this is what you're saying is so highlighted in the next album. Okay. Everybody, move the pit, open it up, you know, like, here we go, this is the part where everyone's like, no, I'm, I'm getting out there, this is my, this is my favorite song, fuck you, yeah. they're good at that, this is, that, you don't want to do this, dog, people are getting hurt right now, and there's no music going on. that's a wild thought, yeah, now, to, be able, to be able to hear the thrashing, to be able to hear, like, things being hit and tapped and this and that and people just like getting into it because they just put a pause of nothing now it's it's it, like as you can see it's more of the same right. uh with with only the really the like the biggest addition i would say to that third song and like we said we're, we're dissecting these these albums by one song off of them that i randomly picked. sure yeah I'm uh, not... the first two i tried to go with the most popular songs off those albums in my opinion i think in no way does anyone think this is like a educated editorial of the whole yeah. turnstile discography more into the, the the now with this one this is the new album 
uh, okay. what is it, Glow On. Now, Glow On, people were looking forward to this. You know, like a sequel to a movie or something. You know, like, they, right. this was talked about. People were like, you know, I want to hear the next album. I think people were expecting more of the same. Okay. And I don't think that this, this album didn't deliver on that, but it, it – I think the best way to put, put this – we're going to go with – my favorite song is Holiday. We're going to listen to more than one song. Okay. So let's just start with Mystery. Just start it off because I think that's the best way to get an idea of a new album. Like just start with the first one. Right. You're going to see an, a trope right in the beginning with uh, – this see, is mystery. So you know it's hardcore because every single title is in all capital lines. Yes, that's you got to cap. You got to cap all the. Well, how do people know that you're not yelling see, it? Pre precisely, precisely. All right. all right, here is mystery. Mystery on. Right. That is. That's why I wanted you oh. to hear that. <laughs> and that's the first song on the track too. This is all like everyone. This is how they heard. open th this album. I feel like I'm on a cloud, going on a whimsical this adventure. This is a hardcore album. I'll Oh, uh -oh. Of one of the most uh -oh. predominant hard the cloud, just, the cloud just opened up. What happened? Things are not... Imagine being in the crowd hearing this shit. Dude. Like that opener. Mm -hmm. It's clean. It's dirty. It, it, it's smooth as fucking butter. Right? This is, in my opinion, their best album. Like, they, they're not ignoring that part that they did at the beginning. No. It's still here. Two step all day. <laughs> James Addiction. Yes! It's like a 90s, like, alternative rock band just getting a radio hit. Perfect, you know? This album is radio hits. Yeah, it is. Like, because we're going to listen to at least two more before I go into the big story. Okay. Right. Little... Little guitar craziness there. I wouldn't call this hardcore though. Maybe that's where the conversation is. It is a hardcore album. All right. I mean, I'm not. I think okay, this, this, is, is, this is one song. Yeah. I think that that's, this is arguably the most like all over all over the place hardcore album I've ever heard. Listen to. Oh, what the fuck was that? I like the I like the bass run. Yeah. It's got the same energy. It's yeah. all there, like, it's got that, it showed you, like, we haven't changed anything, but I've changed everything. Like, I mean, it does sound completely different, like... Listen to uh, that! Why is this a hardcore album? I... <laughs> like, the next song, go, let it go right into Blackout. Nice. Right? Nice. And they do that live. I've heard, I've seen the record, I've seen them do that. Like, they get kicked right into this. So now it starts to sound more like hardcore again. Okay. Exactly. There's like these, but the, the vocals, the way they polished up the band without losing any of the elements that make it a hardcore band. That is what I think every band has never accomplished before. I like, saves the day. I can't listen to certain albums because it's too overproduced. Like, that was the problem AFI had. They were too right. talented and they got too overproduced. This is or it's like you know what you're doing in the recording room. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like you hit the studio and you fucking rock that studio. No, End the fucking back. stage. Are they playing the East Coast by any chance? Uh, I will let you know when they when they are. Tombstone, Tombstone, all the time, every day. <laughs> no, at this point, dude, I'm just getting people. I guess it's the same thing. It's the same thing. It's the same, okay, it's the same literally the same thing. You're, just move, you're moving your hands upwards more, and you're moving your hands downwards more. Yeah, pretty much. That's all it is. It's the same foot motion. Now we're going to go to holiday after this. But what's this? What's this? Oh, no, man. Oh, jeez. All right. Okay. No more notifications. 
don't like notifications, but we do at the same time. Yeah. Look it up when they're playing. They're playing yeah. Chicago. Nah, they, I, I know they were playing Florida. Because they're playing places they can get away with. Pennsylvania. Philly. October 10th. October 10th in, in Philadelphia they're playing. I don't know what I'm doing that day, but it might be this. Oh, they're playing with Suicide Boys. I know what that show is. And Chief of Keith. Chief Keith. Yeah, dude. What? You want to go get stamped? No. <laughs> Honestly, I guarantee that's sold out. But I could probably, we could probably fight together. Okay. So go to, uh, the, the, what is it? This role then just don't play. But go to Holiday. Oh, it's the same song. song. It's the same song. I, I thought it rolled over. But when this goes out, we're going to go to the holiday. See, it's all there. What? And it's awesome, right? Oh, yeah. You know when, like, somebody just does something right? You're like, yeah. Yeah, you're right. I know it doesn't oh, fit. You know? But it does all fit. All right, so go to holiday. This is probably my favorite song on the album. Uh, Wild Wild uh, is pretty good, too. A Wild World. Right. Uh, but this is probably my favorite song on the album. All right, I'm in. That's different. Right? <laughs> What's, what is happening? Now it's a holiday! Two step your fucking heart out. <laughs> that is a hardcore song. Yeah. Like, I don't care what that beginning part was. This is a hardcore song. You know, like, and that's, that's what this, every song is like that. Right. On this album. Like, this is beautiful harmony right there. I mean, I guess this is the fun of breaking different genres, not just abiding to a cookie cutter genre. They're, they're not, they're like opening the genre. It's it's like they're making it like you can do a lot in hardcore. It's accessible. Yeah. But this is like, that's not what we do in hardcore. Like, that's not what we do. We, we repeat what people have already established. More <laughs> like what? You know, like it's just the idea. Like that's why this is so revolutionary. It's they're expanding the genre. Right. W what? You know, like and little owner they expanded. a genre that seems so just it's similar. stagnant. Right. It, it's 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 literally worshiping a dead genre. You're worshiping a dead horse. You're like standing around and you're going, oh yes, the horse. It was the best horse. There's no reason to get a new horse. <laughs> this dead horse, its skeleton will that's rise. A hilarious it's fucking idea. goth. You know, like we just that's what we do in this genre. And these people, for they, they're expanding it. They're broadening the audience. Mm -hmm. And, and and it's really good. Like this is, if you don't like this album, get the fuck out of here. I, I I don't understand what you're doing here, because it's so it's so laughing in the face of that old attitude of like not things can sound different and be different, you know. And this is the band that everyone was like, oh, this is the flavor of the month for this generation. You know, no one's gonna fucking know about Turnstile ten years down the road, but they're gonna know about Chromax, they're gonna know about fucking Black Flag and mm -hmm. all this other shit. No, not after that. So we can. Now that was the listening aspect of you being introduced to Turnstile. I explained my opinion on how much it's changed my perspective on the band from the five or seven songs I let you. Li we've we've gone over. What do you think of Turnstile? So we were kind of discussing it before. I like if I, if I heard this without any introduction and I was into, I wouldn't have thought of them as a hardcore band. I wouldn't have thought maybe the earlier songs. I could say okay, that's hardcore, but especially the modern album, I would have never said hardcore. I would have. I, I mean, I don't really know. You know, it's one of those things where the term punk is just such a broad brush. But I would call it punk, but that's because it's just an easy name. You know, it's like alternative rock. If you don't know what it is, oh, it's alt rock. Cool. Yeah, I, so, I see what you're saying there. 
So I, I, but like to me, hardcore is so. I don't know how to establish this opinion. Hardcore is a very, a very like, hardcore bands that I know that I go to see sound very similar. They, they sound they are, pretty. They, no, I agree with you fully. No, and and I get you it. Just but, saw uh, sick of it all yesterday. <laughs> you know, like they sound like sick of it all. They if do. They're from New York. They sound like sick of it all. Where they sound fair. like Reagan Youth and like right. a thousand other ones of those bands, Madball, right. whatever. Madball is probably the most exact, like the most genre breaking of those three I just mentioned. Right. Or they sound like Fear. Okay. Or uh, Black Flag. The first band I thought of though that I don't know if you know who uh, Captain No Captain Chunk is, but no. they're um so they're not they're they were your, when did I. I started listening to them when I went to Warped Tour and Bamboozled to go for the Dying Ska scene, and I got a whole bunch of, like, hardcore and emo as a treat because that's what all my friends emo went there for. Emo as a treat. As a treat. As a treat. Just a little treat. Just a, just a wee bit of emo in there. Okay. It's okay. In fact, it was kind of funny. Emo. I went into, you know, I'm used to my little jumpy skank pits. This is why maybe I'm It's, I, hard, I it's okay six, for 17. hardcore kids to have a little emo. <laughs> as a treat. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember my friends, like, not genuinely making fun of me, but just poking fun at the fact that I looked so happy in a hardcore pit because everyone else is like, you're not allowed to, yeah. and I'm just like, yeah, woo. <laughs> but I think that that's that that that's one of the that's a great point to bring up because that's literally all Turnstile is. It's fun. Yeah, it's fun. Very fun. And 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 not there isn't a lot of room to act like a tough guy. And it's new fun. Like it, it's different. What I really appreciate about Turnstile in the earlier albums, it was it was easier to hear them as a hardcore band. But as we pro as we progressed through the years and the different albums, they changed. But they also would go back to what like in the same song, it'll have a yeah. it'll have a melodic a melodic opener and then go right into a hard hard style or a hardcore beat and then break out of that for like a guitar solo. I wouldn't expect to hear in a They're hardcore good band at what they and then do. go right back into it again. The modern album, I think, actually paid the least uh, homage to their original sound, but that's just progression. Yeah. Like that's, it's, it's okay to change and be different. I think that it's it does it in such a way with that the new album where you're like, anytime you forget that you're listening to Turnstile, don't worry, though, that, that two-step is coming. Right. To remind you, like, we're here, bro, and we're here to two-step. Uh, but, like, and those beats and that rhythm and that style of, that like kind of broken up speech broken uh style of singing mm -hmm. that hardcore brings like it's almost like a spoken word like oh, i feel this way about this and then this and this and this for sure you know, like and seeing how old because what that first album from hard style is what 2003 you said 2013 2013 it's oh. 2013 2016 and then 2018 is the the album before this and they just released a new album uh, like a month ago gosh yeah yeah so not even yeah, yeah, the one that's the one that we were just listened to. Yeah, no, it's just interesting because I can hear like turnstile sounds in more in different popular music. Like I can hear, oh yeah, you know, like in the in the mid like when I was in middle school, they, they would have blended in perfect. Like the modern, I don't know how do I the modern album would have fit in really well with like I think they would have been in the same realm as like some forty one, like the early days or like maybe blink the early days, like just that pop. And me the mesh of pop and, pop and punk, but when it was more punk sided, I, going into it. Yeah, I think that the reason why, like they, th being that the band that came out in two thousand thirteen, that with that first album, right, and the, the first two albums, really, arguably, are really navigated towards, we are hardcore kids. This Absolutely. is the hardcore audience we placate to, and that's really how, I, I, I don't care what genre of music you really play, if you want to be part of ska. Or hardcore or punk you have to placate to that audience that's all you have to really do you have to play those shows and you have to play with that audience and right. you can take whatever title you want if they like you and you play those shows mm -hmm. you'll be fine world inferno friendship society is not a fucking punk band but yes they fucking are uh, all right. You know, like, I'll take your word for it. Yeah, you never heard of World Inferno Friendship Society? <laughs> we'll do that me, on think, another episode. I think you showed me a song or two, but... On four, rest rest in peace, Jack Terrycloth. But, uh, yes, please. Well, but um, they are one of those bands. It's it's a bunch of Jewish-influenced music, mm -hmm. a carnival, uh, like, uh, there's all these different elements with ska and punk right. and stuff. And they're, like, you just... If someone gave you that album and just handed it to you or heard it at the radio, you would mm -hmm. never in a million years think that they have a loyal punk rock following. 
like an insanely, okay. insanely loyal punk rock following. And like to the, they were like they had fanatical fans. Like you know, like they, they like when you went to their show. Like I've been going to their shows since their early days, so they didn't have all the like. They have tropes almost like you would have in Rocky Horror Picture. Like, you right. know how, like, the fans started doing certain things at sure. certain scenes? They do that for World Inferno songs. All right, that's cool. So, like, there's a certain <laughs> part where people hand out confetti when they know they're going to play that song. And then they'll throw confetti in the air for this one break of the song. So you're in the, you're just in, like, a fucking hall, like, some, like, moose lodge connected to a crappy bar that maybe fits like 200 people at the most mm -hmm. and kids are throwing confetti at one part of the show you That's know like yeah, yeah, no yeah. i mean it's a it's an experience you know and okay so it's, more it's, like... it's awesome okay it's something that you like it's one of those things in punk and hardcore that it's hard to describe because right. it's something that you just kind of like you kind of have experience and like that what turnstile always has done is play to that audience so it doesn't really matter what they sound like right to me because they play to that audience but with that new album it's like you're not playing to anybody no they, they know, are like, playing for themselves yeah and it's kind of genius how they did it too i mean i guess it, I, i'm sure it wasn't planned over these many years but they started as more of a hardcore sound and then just slowly slowly crept away in a direction that they wanted to go and i think that this is where we're gonna go into the bigger subject but like there was a lot of marketing put into this album. Okay. Like, people made DIY toys of them. They had a really? giant turnstile, like, record release at a New York sto store where kids could, like, wait outside, almost like a clothing release. Right. Like, you know how Supreme does, like, a clothing release and people wait and they, you know, only so much, you, you got to be there that day to get get it. Stuff. Yeah. They, they did sell that a for, brick. <laughs> they did that for, like, turnstile. Okay. Essentially. You know, where they had, like, certain merch. They had like a turnstile, like merch only thing like that. I, I, I don't, I might be screwing up some of the details, but I do know some younger kids who went to this experience. So it was a big promotional thing, like done in the fashion of like, I guess you could say like a modern album or like, you know, Drake coming out with an album or something right. like that. That's how much attention I feel it got for a hardcore album that's insanely rare or a hardcore band. So it kind of shows the, the 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 attention they brought the the audience the, how much they've expanded the audience the people on the internet care what happens with this album and how we accept it. I about to say I saw a lot of people on TikTok talking about it. I had no idea what the hell they were talking about, but they were talking. And now we're gonna go into this part. Like, I loved your perspective on it. I kind of agree with you mm -hmm. on most of that. Now there's just as much as there's a trope in being an old hardcore head right. there's a trope in being a young hardcore head and they're okay. a much more gatekeepy in the sense that like we're old old heads are gatekeepy by telling you the shit ain't punk they're gatekeepy on telling you that shit sell out or too popular or too or too like if anything is like the fact that turnstile is getting this much attention right they hate it they got too popular and i'm not like i i, I I know sh this person is a fan of my content, so I hope she doesn't take this personal that I, I'm using her opinion. Uh, I'll try to keep it as vague as possible. Mm. But I was talking to a younger uh, person who was into hardcore, and I was asking her, like, what do you think about this new album? Because it's really changed my whole perspective on the band, and I wasn't a fan of them before, and now I'm a huge fan. Like, right. I'm totally swallowed the pill i'm into turnstile this is the wave let's do it mm -hmm. you know and i'm excited for hardcore because of this right and i kind of said this to her and she was like if selling out had a sound it would be Ooh. this album that's what she said that was, that was the word she used and it was so funny to me to hear such a young person i feel make an argument for Something that should be, like, the argument for new... Hardcore's still alive today. Like, fuck you old guys. Look how fucking much we're rocking it. You know? Like, so, you, got, you know? And that wasn't her response. Her response was straight up, like, fuck this popular shit. If you want to listen to Justin Bieber, go fucking, you know, like... Dude, you know what? Go this... listen to MTV, you bunch of posers. Like, that's how she acted. And I was like, oh, I thought I was being progressive. Well, you are. But you see, the same fucking thing happened 
with like third wave ska. And I understand more. Yeah. I understand yeah, more. Yeah, totally. Like, ska to Network has touched on it a lot. I've seen a lot of people Absolutely, just talk about they've it. Touched on and it a lot. the one thing that I've never considered was the serious connotation behind first and second wave and how a lot of that was lost in third wave. That I can see. It, de- it was lost by me, even. I was one of those people that was ignorant and thought, like, punk, ska was a part of punk. Like, I never realized it had an audience after the sure. two tone thing. I had to learn about that. After I turned 18. Right. You know, I guess. See, I learned it, like, Third Wave Ska was my intro to Ska. I didn't even know anything Me about Me too, totally. Ska. Exactly. Absolutely. But so just think about that. Like, the fact that there's different <laughs> levels of different things of something that people enjoy can allow for a newer audience to come in. And I guess some people fetishize the idea of being such a small scene and they don't want new people. I think it's people me. that have never heard the specials. I think that's really what well, it is. I was talking just in a broad scheme of gatekeeping in general, and especially in the music scene. Like, I think I think everything I'm listening to is wonderful, but I also recognize I've never really been a person to consider myself in a scene or part of a community up until moving to Asbury Park. Like, I have friend groups, but I always just did whatever I wanted to do, man. Like, I never really, like, I, if I like the song, you know, I was a simple guy. If I like the song, I like the song. It wasn't me, you know, I, I didn't start really taking on a ska kid persona until, like, the past, just shy of a decade now, sort of thing. I have and, a, yeah, I have a question for that. Now, sure. you said you've never been a part of, like, is that a thing that you think happened because of you moving to an area and being part of a group? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, so I, it's not, it has, because all of our way, like the, what I would make an argument to what you're saying mm-hmm. is our argument or the people that are saying is not that we felt part of something. We sat in a room obsessed with this alone and we feel attached to it. Okay. Like, I think that that's where, like, I, I think that's even where it's coming from a like the ignorant ska punk fans is they like this is outsider music up until recently mm-hmm. so you didn't talk to a lot of people it was really rare that you knew someone in your high school that liked ska or even sure. knew what it was like it's, it's just interesting because you see the same thing in just different completely on I'll say unconnected but I mean that in a loose way and I'll get to that in a second but even like in the anime world like anime was very much a thing where people would shut themselves away and just watch their own thing and aside a and very small subset and that's why it gets geeky right and now people are almost pissed that anime is so acceptable nowadays because they didn't have to go through the stuff they had to which I mean my retort to that is like isn't that the point to make it easier on the newer generations I love it. I think it's so cool that someone can walk around with an anime shirt and not have to worry about getting punched in the face. I think it comes with... I think it comes like this. It it, it comes with the trope of finding other... You used to meet people that you would have that friendship and that understanding of Mm -hmm. a love for something because of the, 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 the struggle that you went through to like it. When I first got into anime, they didn't have an anime fucking section at the no. store yep. like you went I had to go to Suncoast they had a book and you'd go through the book of all the releases mm-hmm. and I would find basically the anime the animes that look I didn't get a fucking picture on the cover I didn't get to read the back I literally looked the name based on like things I read or in mm-hmm. a magazine or something and was like I want to order these sure I mean well you see even like the cosplay in general has exploded but that all came from conventions where people would go and eventually like you know you talk to people about anime and then you start dressing up as characters or wearing articles from them but those conventions were also were only were one of the only ways people could get their hands on things from Japan like this is early early inter- like the internet existed but it yeah, was not but the it's culture not, it was today it, yeah it doesn't have the it doesn't have the easy access that I would right, say right exactly yeah. I couldn't I couldn't just google what Tokyo looks like back then there were still there was still a fantasy and exploration factor, and there still is, but, like, it was just... I, I had no way to visualize or imagine what anything looked like, and I had no way of looking up, oh, what anime is a good anime? Like, it was exactly what you said, and it would just be boxes and boxes of VHS tapes and DVDs and, like, you know, buy this one, and it was it was like... It was and like that's the very much flea like... Market. Yeah, and, and that that's, was the only way you can get into it. And that's kind of what punk and hardcore was, is you would yeah. hear, like, the trickles of it from a kid... Or you'd go to some event in your town, or you'd see a flyer, or mm-hmm. you'd hear about Black Flag or something, and you'd go to your store and just go through this small section they had of punk, where, like, the dude at the record store probably loves music, so that's just, like, of one course. thing he likes. Like, you might be lucky and find a guy that works at the record store, or a girl that works mm-hmm. at the record store, and is like, oh, I fucking am super into hardcore, or whatever. Sure. But for the most part, it's another thing in the the trophy of stuff that they have so it's not and that's the thing about hardcore and punk 
Mm-hmm. Like we, you get obsessive. Like people, it's like being a comic book fan or an anime fan in that way. Right. But we all have very similar things in common. We're all immature. Most of us get into <laughs> it as children, and we kind of like the tropes that go along with this. And this goes into my bigger story the biggest story of it all Mm -hmm. and that and i'm so glad when we decided to have this podcast i was really going to focus on the album but then this happened okay and if you aren't already aware someone pooped in the pit at the turnstile show there it is someone pooped in the pit at the turnstile show and we have to get to the bottom of biggest news all right now i have a bunch of memes i'm going to be showing you and, and i sent you this one says i survived the the turnstile shit pit and it has the date, Santa Cruz, and, and the and the and the place uh, on it. Um, these are real shirts. People are really selling these. Um, Do these, we understand? Was the shit intentional? Did someone just was? From in? what I understand, from my yes, I did extensive research on this. Uh, someone shit in the pit. At some point, people stepped in the shit. Of course. And then must have jumped off the stage. And the shit got on the stage oh. from jumping off the stage with them not realizing. So that's where we're assuming the shit got. Because that was, it's not that they shit in the turnstile pit. It's that they shit and people stepped in it and it got on the stage. That's the, the fact that it got on the stage right. is groundbreaking shit. All right. That like, no shit. pun intended. Oh, the pun was very uh, intended. It was super Don't intended. It was really Don't fun. It was really fun. <laughs> uh, we're going to go to the next meme. And this is probably my favorite one. Uh, uh, th- do you know who that is? Uh, a lady with a gun. Okay. that is, you, you are almost right. It is Gun Girl. If you are ah, not familiar ah, with Gun I was, Girl, I was close. her name is K- Catherine Bennett, I believe, or Catherine Bennett. Okay. She famously shit her pants at, 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 a, at a frat party when she was uh, young in college. And there are horrible, hor- I mean, when she shit her pants, we can't even show it here. I like, I'll show it to you later. It is insane how much shit comes out of her. Uh, uh, she's like, she passed out and she's wearing a dress Aww. and shit came out. Now, if you're not familiar with this person, she is a very famous right winger who, uh, uh, for her graduation, showed up with a gun at graduation and like graduated with a <laughs> gun. Name it. There's no rule. Like, there's nobody that said that she couldn't do this, or, like, it wasn't... It was just a statement of, like, to carry arms, and she's basically... Right, she's American, right? Yeah, yeah. we yeah. have guns in our schools all the time. So, yeah, we do. We're all huge on that here. Uh, so, what she did is she would famously went around colleges and would ask college kids, like, talking points, and then say right-wing talking points, and, like, you know, say, you know... Hey, you know, like she would she would try to like own libs, I guess, in, in yeah. her in a sense. Right. But now she can't go anywhere because everyone just shows that image of her shitting her pants. I mean, well, how, and, how do you recover from that? And, do, do, honestly, when, couldn't it happen to a better person. Because if that happened to a regular person, I would argue that photo should be burned from the internet. Because like, oh, that poor person right. fucked up at one day. Well, but went, she fucked up every day of her life. So, so I, I went into this feeling bad at first. No, no, they, I would feel bad originally, but based on how horrible of a human being she chooses to be on a daily basis, right. And literally makes that's how she makes her money. She's like an internet personality, right? So who, a serious yeah, person, like who if, like spreads hateful like shit everywhere. Like you know? if I shit my pants, it would be pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> I actually even missed that one. Thank you. But if I shit my pants, I can at least eventually rock it. Shut up, computer. I can at least eventually rock it, or not eventually rock. But I'll be like, all right, yeah, it happened. What what am I gonna do? Because no. I learned it's all about ownership. But like when you're in a position like that, you just you can't you can't. And the own amount it. of shit that came out like. It is like her, there's like a leg and then there's shit, like a mm-hmm. river. And then there's, and it's not even a river. It's all like solid too, bro. And like, and then another leg. It's bad. It's one of the, the worst shitting the pants. If you haven't looked I it want, up, look it up. Look up Gun Girl Shitter Pants. I it's think, fucked up, bro. I think a wonderful skit for you would be to get the Gun Girl Pants Shitting picture and just start portray or start presenting it like your, uh, someone that works in an art like a museum like here we have girl that shat pants yeah. and stuff and just go off of it like that like you're the cu- like you're the amazing. curator like you're the curator that's proud what to did put she this on. eat like a bunch like a hundred dollars <laughs> worth of mcdonald's like Dude, I mean, I like it's insane but these are some of the tweets 
from like we're gonna move we're gonna move on to more shit related content fantastic uh what is it somebody shit in the in the turnstile pit last night no lie that is literally what somebody tweeted and it got 900 retweets uh, uh what is it seven thousand over seven thousand likes of course. because why not the major here's another major news uh well the, the music new, news article turnstile new new music is so good people are literally shitting themselves that is the you that know, it, as that, a as a as a nerd on a different side this is oddly familiar of uh there was a convention that was put on called um dash con now this was an unofficial tumblr convention so a bunch of people tried unofficial to do, tumblr right, convention so i'm already not, signed in this was not on Tumblr's behalf, but it was so not on Tumblr. Tumblr was not supporting. Tumblr was these not. People. Yeah, Tumblr was not. <laughs> they <directly laughs> involved. They were like, you know, it was just one of those like, we want a Tumblr. Let's start our convention. own TikTok, not TikTok involved. Uh, indeed, uh, indeed. Thing in Asbury, but it was just it's it's just known for being so incredibly poorly run. I mean, like major acts dropped out at the last minute because they didn't get paid. There was a re they had to uh, do a donation thing because apparently they didn't pay the hotel enough. And they promised the hotel to pay them when they earn revenue from ticket sales of people coming in, which they didn't make enough. And it turned into, like, a they've called everyone into the Grand Hall. And they're like, we need to do this for Tumblr so that we can all come together. And if everyone just donates one dollar. And you could even hear some people are like, fuck you. This is extortion. But either way, one of the pinnacle things that happened was there was a ball pit. And I don't mean, like, a big ball pit. I mean, they went to Walmart. Like a human got ball pit? Like a ball pit, like okay, for no, like it human wasn't... size people, not children. Oh, I, I thought that's not where. I thought yeah, I, I should have said adults. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. They just went to Walmart and got like some inflatable pool and just put balls in it, like Chuck E. Cheese balls. But somebody eventually went in there and pissed in the ball pit. They pissed in it. They pissed in the ball pit. That's pretty and good, but it would have been better if they shit. In it it would have been, but again, this is progression. This was earlier, so we progressed from piss to shit. Yeah, it all comes full it's, circle. Yeah, I like. But it was that. also one of those things where I forgot if they did through donations or something. But like, if you hit a different tier of donating, they gave you an extra hour in the ball pit, which turned into a gigantic meme within itself. Where it's just like, <sighs> jump in the pit. Yeah, it <laughs> yeah, was just, jump in the pit. It was <laughs> jump in the piss pit. Yeah, <laughs> the piss ball pit. Right no. At whatever Tumblr non-official event. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but so uh, if that that whole convention pretty much ended with people wondering if the people that ran the Tumblr convention Dash Con just kind of stole the money that was all donated because it was also like, how the hell did they get enough money to do it? There was a lot of you could look that one up on your own time. We gotta get to a the, lot yeah. of, Oh, I I'll show you a whole video after we're done. We'll, here. Have, we'll have to get to the bottom of that another time. But let me see. We're gonna go on to the next little like. So this is another music uh, music article. Uh, someone pooped their pants in the mosh pit at the Turnstile concert. This is clearly written by uh, a normie because they called it a concert and they said mosh pit. Like we just call it pit. We don't say it. we mosh in the. And pit. we go to shows. Yeah, we go to shows. You you freaking square. Yeah. Nerd. Uh, here is <laughs> Metal Sucks, who is uh, I'm actually mutuals with him. He's a good guy. Um, uh, what is it? But they, they, I think they do a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. I think it's not just one person. I think it's like a, bro a sure. broader music. But uh, but I know one of the dudes uh, from there. So uh, they have someone shat in the mosh pit at the Turnstile show. And it has a little poop emoji, as you can see above here, with the picture of Turnstile. Uh, <laughs> what is it? Then we have uh, M Mosher poops in the pit at the Turnstile concert, also a normie. Because they're literally trying to get to the bottom of who shit in the turnstile pit. Like, right. turnstile wants to know. Uh, someone someone pooped in the turnstile pit at the Santa Cruz show. <laughs> at the end, Straight and it ended up on the stage. Like, the fact that it ended up on the stage is more, like, it's more headline worthy than it just happened. Breaking. Someone pooped in the turnstile pit and it got on stage. Again, these are multiple... Uh, news sources. Another one. <laughs> Why? And then this is a, a, a uh, this is a meme that our friend, uh, what is it, tall guy, uh, mm -hmm. came up. I, I believe he made this meme. Uh, someone, someone in the pit. Is this a toilet? No. <laughs> At the I stop. mean, I guess technically a toilet is a pit, just not that pit. So, um, those are some of my favorite ones. Uh, the what is it? The Gun Girl is by far the best. Oh, uh, absolutely. Um, what is it? But I just think this is so funny because, like, at the core of all of us, we're children. 
<laughs> and like it doesn't matter that they wrote a revolutionary album and we're all arguing over if it's hardcore or if it isn't because someone shit in the pit dude <laughs> even from a pr standpoint though this is boosting the meme economy and therefore boosting their name within the meme economy so it's it's also a wonderful i mean here we go conspiracy time what if they planted someone what if the, what if they planted the shit in the pit so that so it would you're, explode so you're suggesting yes so we, get let's Super get this straight right now yes you are suggesting that Turnstile yes. is in a conspiracy. Yes, with big shit. With big sh- with with the mad pooper. <laughs> with the mad pooper. To shit in their pit to yes. cause this much controversy. Correct. Because they knew that someone shitting in the pit is like the end all be all of a fucking show. Yes. I, <laughs> and think about it. I didn't hear about Turnstile until someone pooped in a pit and everyone was talking about it. <laughs> It works. I want to argue with you. I really do. Exactly. I want. I want to I make a. Leg- you have me in a like a strong man's argument. Exactly. That's I feel well, like that's, that's what conspiracy theorists do. Where yeah. it's like you're wrong, but you're portraying like in a you're way where you're technically I can't... right. Like that. It, like <laughs> technically, what you're saying makes sense, but it's insanity. <laughs> like I, w- what? <laughs> like, what I think is funnier about this is this is not the first time I've heard of this situation uh, happening. Wait, what? You, this is not the first time you heard someone pooping in the pit? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. It uh, wasn't in the pit. It was on the steps of a venue, uh, and it was inside the venue, though. Uh, was it We was it a few years ago, oh Mad my. Ball played House of Independence. Right. And it was a big show. Uh, our buddy Swank was involved in setting it up. It was mm-hmm. uh, considered a shore-style night. Uh, so that's like kind of a big deal around here, and he always sets up like the best punk hardcore shows in our area. So the fact that he put his name under a Madball show that was coming to house was a big deal. Right. And they had done a few shows at that time. I think this was in January, uh, like the beginning of that year. Okay. Uh, so uh, we all go. It's a big show. Um, what is it? Madball plays. Great, great show. Mm-hmm. Our friend Bacchus jumps off the stage. Bacchus is in a uh, player hater. Okay. And he's also in Sunny Gang. Uh, those are the bands that I knew at the time he was in, at least. And Bacchus jumps off the stage, jumps over the audience, like really fucking leaps, mm-hmm. and and f- just crashes to the floor, face first. Breaks his face. I, I think he knocked himself out cold. Breaks his face. Like, this part of his eye socket, broken. Okay? Broke his face, Jesus bro. Jesus Christ. Okay? So I'll try to get an image of Bacchus to throw up here. I don't think Bacchus would have a problem with that. I'll ask his consent <laughs> uh, uh, to, just to make uh, sure. Because yeah, his yeah. face got I'm... fucked, bro. His face got fucked. So anyway, they had to, like, carry him out and shit. And they, like, if you know the setup of House of Independence, um, it's, you know, there's a big standing room floor. Mm-hmm. And towards the back of that standing room, there's, like, the bleachers that fold into it. And then there's, like, a doorway, a very large doorway you right. walk past that, there's bathrooms, and there's a bar. Okay. And then on the far side of that bar, there's stairs to go up into the upper st- balcony where you enter the venue. Right. That leads out to Cookman Ave, the main street on Asbury Park. Mm-hmm. So they they carried him up those stairs from that back bar out to the, the ambulance and to get him out to you know help him. Right. At the end of that show, someone had shat on the steps. There was like a baby poop. It was a baby poop, and it was, it was your baby poop. And my my feeling is that it it was it's just a wet log, so a lot of it must have lost a lot of its consistency as it moved down. It's almost like a reverse avalanche. You are you are so poetic with your fecal descriptions. Thank yeah, well, you. You gotta be. You gotta be because I don't. Of the, the details matter. The details matter. And what is it? It was all a little baby poop. And <laughs> and our and our friend Dan. Uh, Dan Shields, I believe, who uh, worked at the venue at the time, right. he he was the man that had to clean up the poop. So oh, he gave no. me the four one one on the actual consistency and where the poop laid and went what time. Oh. So our first assumption was that Bacchus shit his pants after he got hit in the face and and it rolled down there. Now, the, also, it's important to point out that the bathroom is four or five feet away from where the, where the shit was found. Wonderful. So I'm thinking either maybe they shat in the bathroom and it came. It was a traveling shit. So maybe there was no shitting in the oh, venue yes. at all. The sisterhood, the sisterhood of the traveling shit. Got or it. they just they were on a runway, like they were coming down the bathroom and they were right. like, oh, and then they, you know, they got a little out <laughs> as they were coming down. There was like a little turtle head, you know. 
How do but, people get away with this? And they don't they didn't find the perpetrator? No. To this day, the mad pooper is out on the loose, bro. Because the first hit question we had from Bacchus when he woke up, yes, he knocked himself out and was out for a little while. But when he woke up, we were like, oh, check your pants, bro. Did you poop yourself? <laughs> and he was just as excited as us to find out if he was the mad pooper like he wanted to get to the bottom of it is like that's the thing that you need to understand about hardcore punk rock guys shit trumps all things like if shit is involved or poop is involved we like all concentration is lost we need to get to the bottom of this and and and, and we never found it for two weeks well i've done more than several podcasts about that event all right where people are like who's the mad pooper who did it now, with the Santa Cruz situation, with the the situation, it was Santa Cruz, right? I'm, I, I'm, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what is it in, in California? That show. Several people have claimed on my TikTok when I pointed out that we were doing this podcast mm-hmm. that they are sworn to secrecy. You know who I, you are. I'm not going to call you out. Uh, but they're sworn, they're, to they're sworn to secrecy. They know who the mad pooper is. So now there's the cult of poop too. Who have so seen- maybe we'll we'll jump back to our argument. So instead of the masons, they have the free poopers. Now, so this person claims just- that they know who that who the mad pooper is. The fact that I personally believe they should be subpoenaed. I like <laughs> I, I I don't understand why we aren't bringing this person to the highest court. Like you like. <laughs> I, I, I like. I would argue that this is a treason on all of hardcore. You need. We need to know who it is. The like the people pers- deserve to know. They're not. The thing is, we're not going to shame this person. You're a hardcore legend, bro. I you are know. going down as. You, in my mind, the mad pooper, or the the turnstile pooper, is just as infamous as like the, the Pooh Bear guy at, at all ska shows, or the guy in the banana suit. Or, or, we are we are not comparing a dude shitting in the pit to or the dude my that bana- brought the taser to my potassium brethren or the dude that brought a taser to the hardcore show and is just like shooting the taser off every once in a while in the pit. That's pretty tough too. That guy's hard. I don't remember his name, but I remember the taser. That was a. Th- Did anyone get hurt or it, tased? Yeah. No, no. He just brought it. Like whoever brought it was just like you know. You know, shock factor. I'm gonna, you know, shock factor. <laughs> like, Got it. Puns Teaser. on top of puns. Indeed. On, on Indeed. top of puns. Indeed. But uh, this, <laughs> the, the, I went to a blind society show. I was talking about this last night at the at at, uh, at Bouncing Souls with mm-hmm. a friend. We, blind, I think it was a blind society record release. It was definitely a shore style night. Right. Uh, there was a man in the pit with a taser, and he just kept holding it up above everyone and then setting it off every once in a while just to let everybody know like this is fucking hardcore <laughs> like, you know I am a teaser. and that guy in my mind is just as infinite and just as uh, legendary as the turnstile mad pooper and, and like he made the show better and I'm assuming like I didn't get a lot of reports on the consistency of the poop but it was definitely at least solid enough to to make a nice dookie and then someone stepped in it and it was all like flatty after that so we don't really know the yeah that's what happens when you step in shit yeah but they said it was in the middle people said like the way that they emphasized it was that somebody was like i'm shitting in the pit like i'm gonna go out in the pit and i'm gonna pull trot and i'm gonna dump and then I'm gonna walk away, and I'm gonna act like not no wife, nothing. I'm just walk oh, away. I'm gonna act like. Just imagine getting cheeks. away with that. Imagine doing that. Like you pull. That's the you're the, one of the greatest pranksters in the world. Like you just come down full trot in front of everybody in the pit. You are like hiding in plain sight, and you just lay down a log. Can I? Can I? Can I just say one thing though? <laughs> that since this has been done, we don't need to replicate it, nor do we need to make this a thing that happens. And someone often. beat you to the punch. That's right. how I would but look I, at I it. The joke has been done. I don't want to see a wave of people Unless shitting Unless it's the same pits. guy, and he has to keep getting away with it. So it's a serial shitter. Okay. Like, if it's the same person, and they're just like a serial shitter, and they go to predominant hardcore shows and like it's like seeing hate five six they're like oh it's gonna be a good show hate five six is here he's gonna film the show it's like there's a shit in the pit it must be crazy good you know i just listen i just i already have to deal with my brother doing a terrible job picking up the dog poop in our own backyard i don't want to have to be in a fucking pit looking at the ground making sure i'm not stepping in poo but it would also say like you're you're at a legendary show now 
Fantastic. So I will take that van, only one of them, mind you. I will put it in a display box and I'll put it on eBay. And you have up the, the poop shoe. You could up the ante. You and, too like, pee can on up. the poop or something. Or you, like... No, no, no. Though then it's tainted poop. No, it's it's kind of like it's kind of like it's kind <laughs> of like it's kind of like when you find something old and vintage, you do not want to remove the patina from it. When, once that shoe, that once the poop sh hits the shoe, you take that shoe off as quickly as you can and you put it in a confined safe you're place. You're right. You're right. There, All those people at the turnstile show who might have st stepped in the poop, you should now preserve your sh shit shoe. Indeed. Indeed preserve and, the shit and, shoe. And then sell it on eBay to hardcore followers like Absolutely. down the road cuz that that'll definitely be a thing, right? Like who oh. you want like a show because i would buy i'm straight up i've been at events where people have been like oh it was that crazy show like i was at the bad luck 13 uh show where bad luck 13 tried to light the ikea center on fire and people were just throwing chairs it's on youtube i mean let me tell you if you're gonna light a place on fire ikea has plenty of kindling people are just throwing chairs and like tables and shit if you told me you could give me like the leg from one of those chairs i would frame it just saying no i know i'm, th I'm just thinking like yeah the just put the, and then the poop shoe just be right there on a pedestal with a display light, and then don't forget to get all the security lasers, too. Or, like, the burnt too. curtains that they lit on fire? That'd be sick. Uh, <laughs> um, we, make, we can make a po uh, punk artifact wall or a hall of fame where it's just Yeah, all oh, different. my God. We should, we should make an internet be? hall of fame for, for things. And the shit, the turnstile shit would definitely be in that hall of fame. Yes, What absolutely. is it? Turnstile shit, go first. Th I would say that's our first entry. So we're gonna we're gonna start that. Okay. So we're still hardcore legends. The first introduction <laughs> is the the, the the dookie of the turnstile pit. The, tur <laughs> the turd style. The turd style. The turd style. The turd style. As as you will. Oh, so that'll man. be the first introduction into the hardcore <laughs> like memorabilia. Right. Like well how, we'll think of a better name. I think it's a pretty good name. Hardcore memorabilia. Like oh, the hall of the hall style. of hardcore memorabilia. The hall of hardcore. The, the hall of hardcore. The hall of hardcore. The first deduction in the hall of hardcore is the turd style, the, the and it will have like we should make a turd. Yeah, that's great. I love that. Uh, oh man. So, uh, with all this being said, we we had our own relatable situation to shitting in the pit. Yes. Uh, we we didn't get much to the bottom of who shit in the pit because these. These like all punk rockers, like ninjas, they're sworn to fucking secrecy, and like well, yes. and going for their tribe. You know, like they're like holding back their tribal people. They're like oh, he's in my tribe. I, I can't tell you, bro. <laughs> like uh, yeah. you know, like I am sworn Indeed. to secrecy. I like that. Um, also, mad people claim to be the the mad pooper. Of course. There's also a of bunch course. of false claims. Like uh, tall guy claimed it, and I can prove that he wasn't because I don't think he was at that show. That's how I'm proving. That he didn't do it. That would be that would be pretty formidable evidence. Yeah, that is the I don't case. think he's. I don't think he was at the show. That's that's I. Indeed. I'm almost ninety percent sure he wasn't at the show. Yeah, so. I guess. I guess if I had some final thoughts on all this. Yes, final if thoughts. If you want, on, if on you it. want some good press, uh, have someone poop at your show. Yeah, not, not in the bathroom, but just in 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 the vicinity of the show itself. Just have so, have someone poop in it. It's not enough to write a revolutionary hardcore album. No, not you at need all. Someone to poop in the pit. No, people have <laughs> people have written revolutionary albums in in the past. No one has ever pooped at your show. Yes, no one has ever pooped. I've in your pooped pit. at your pit. You poop I'm in sure, your pit. I'm just thinking back to like hippy dippy Woodstock era. I'm sure they shat themselves all the time. It wasn't it was significant. Because, like, they are just smelly. Exactly. It was just another day as a hippie. Yeah, like, smelling like shit all the time, and then someone taking a shit but, where you're standing is yes, irrelevant. In, in modern era, t have someone poop in your pit, boom, viral success. That's it. Yeah, that's, that's all you a need good takeaway. So, you know, turd style versus turd, uh, turd style versus turn style. Go turd style. Go turd style. Okay, so that, yeah, that's how we're going to end it. Uh, that, uh, thank you guys for listening. Uh, please like and subscribe. Absolutely. Uh, what is it? You can follow uh, Amateur Everything uh, on, twi on Twitter, Twitch, uh, t was it Instagram? Do you Twitter? I know I made a Twitter. You should make think... it a Twitter. Uh, we'll help you. Uh, TikTok, uh, on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, <laughs> Twitch, all that shit. Uh, uh, you can find me on all the usual platforms at Grabmaster Hash. I'm Grabmaster Hash One on uh, Twitter. Uh, but uh, what is it? Yeah, thank you for watching and listening. Please describe, share, like, all that Indeed. stuff. Let us know how you feel about it. All right, thank you. All right, bye. Yeah. All right. So